Hi, my name is Johanna Oksala and I'm a professor of philosophy at Loyola University Chicago. In this short lecture, I will discuss the appropriation of nature in capitalism. Many people recognize that capitalism has a destructive relationship to nature. But why is this the case? Some eco-socialist and eco-feminist critics of capitalism have utilized Karl Marx's concept of primitive accumulation, introduced in the first volume of Capital, to explain the process through which capitalism expropriates nature as raw materials for commodity production. So let's begin with this idea of primitive accumulation. Primitive accumulation refers to an inherently violent process of expropriation, extracting resources and appropriating them for free or without adequate compensation. It conveys the insight that capitalist economies have never managed to operate with just the market mechanisms of buying and selling human labor power and raw materials. Instead, capitalism has always relied heavily on outright plunder and theft. As Marx famously writes, capital comes into the world dripping from head to foot, from every pore, with blood and dirt. Examples of primitive accumulation include the enclosure of the commons, forced migration and the slave trade. The domination of nature and the extraction of natural resources can be viewed as another example of primitive accumulation. Naturally produced resources are plundered for productive consumption as raw materials and turned into commodities. Historically, colonialism functioned as an effective political strategy for this kind of expropriation. Resources such as gold, ivory and rubber were extracted from the global, north, global south with minimal or no compensation in order to enrich the global north. There's an ongoing debate on whether primitive accumulation was a historical process that preceded the establishment of properly capitalist forms of production or whether it is best understood as an ongoing process. Marx described it as a historical process of wealth transfer from capitalism's periphery to the center that enabled the emergence of capitalist economies in Europe. But many contemporary Marxist thinkers emphasize its continuous character and its necessary structural links with capitalism. The idea of ongoing primitive accumulation is central for the work of Marxist feminist theorist Maria Mies, for example, who argues that both nature and women's reproductive labor at home are expropriated as supposedly free resources under capitalism. Mies uses uh, the metaphor of an iceberg to illustrate this. Capitalism is an iceberg economy where capital and the wage labor form the visible economy, counted in GDP, and where women's reproductive work at home, work in the colonies, and nature's production are externalized from the official economy and form the large underwater part. Historically, these essential processes of externalization were justified by the naturalization of women and the colonial subjects. They were defined as uncontrolled savage nature to be subdued by force. The rationale for this process was simple. It allowed the early capitalists to forego costs that they otherwise would have had to cover. When the labor of women and colonial subjects was considered as similar to a natural resource, it was easier to treat it as something that was freely available, like air and water. To sum up this line of critique, the central problem with capitalism's expropriation of nature has traditionally been understood to be free riding, 
its failure to pay its bills. Nature is externalized as a costless resource that is impl implicitly assumed to be infinite and can therefore be expropriated without adequate compensation. The idea of primitive accumulation effectively conveys how these free gifts of nature are in fact not free, however, but often produced and expropriated through violent and destructive processes. I want to suggest that there have been some important changes, however, in the way that capitalism ex expropriates nature today. A particularly significant trend characterizing contemporary neoliberal capitalism is the attempt not primarily to externalize nature from the official economy and push it under the surface, but the opposite attempt to internalize more and more ecological services and natural assets into capitalist markets. We can certainly still identify significant processes of externalization and free riding today. The polluting of the atmosphere with excessive greenhouse gases being perhaps the most acute problem. But we can also identify important mechanisms that seek to internalize the environment more fully into capitalist markets, often in the guise of environmental protection. Today, a whole new range of ecological commodities, such as carbon and pollution credits, has been created. With these new commodities, nature is paradoxically commodified as nature, as something that is understood to be external to capitalist expropriation. The value of an ecological commodity rests precisely on the fact that it cannot be productively consumed. For example, an area of rainforest that offsets a certain amount of carbon produced by air travel. Yet, this rainforest becomes a sellable commodity in the new market for carbon trading. So, we can identify a, a twin movement in capitalism's commodification of nature today. Companies externalize costs, for example, by emitting carbon, which then provides opportunities for other companies or sometimes the same companies to make profits through mechanisms of internalization in the form of pollution trading. Neither set of these mechanisms is unproblematic from an ecological perspective. Capitalism's free riding on nature is obviously a problem, but the attempt to protect the environment by turning it into an internal part of capitalist markets has serious problems too. First, from the perspective of economics, it's difficult to fully internalize the so-called positive externalities produced by the environment within the self-regulating market system. The environment is not produced like other commodities. It's a complex, integrated whole, which ultimately includes the whole biosphere. Due to difficulties in assigning correct prices to ecological commodities, we have seen that markets in environmental protection have not functioned very well, even in their own terms, as markets. From a philosophical perspective, the problems with internalizing nature into capitalist markets are perhaps even more serious. As many philosophers have pointed out, markets do more than allocate goods and services. They also importantly express and promote meanings, values and attitudes towards the goods and services that are exchanged. Through marketization, the environment becomes a, a set of distinct market-based utilities, the value of which is determined by the consumer preferences of human individuals. So, the philosophical problem is not just that it's 
technically difficult to establish correct prices for ecological commodities and consequently to protect aspects of the environment that have not been assigned proper economic value. The problem is more fundamentally that such methods cannot compute values that are not monetizable. In other words, values that are fundamentally incommensurable with money. As an example, you can pose yourself the question of what do you think the correct monetary value of the planet Earth is? $125 trillion? $5 quadrillion? The question appears philosophically absurd or nonsensical. This kind of philosophical critique thus suggests that we need a completely different kind of economic system that is capable of recognizing and promoting values that are incommensurable with money.